Okay guys, uh, what I want to do real quick is show you two quick steps into getting started in Mendeley. Uh, the first is going to be the easiest thing. It's going to be to uh, register an account, which I'm not going to show you how to do. You can just come to Mendeley.com uh, and register for a free account. In fact, let me just go ahead and show you the website. Again, it's Mendeley.com. And I've got it right here for you. I'm just going to turn off my bookmarks for a little bit more space on screen. Okay, Mendeley.com. Uh, go to it, go get it. Uh, it's pretty simple. You can download it without having to have the account registered, but you're going to have to have an account registered sooner or later in order to use the features of the program. So go do that. Um, and, and really, it's quite simple. When you go to the download page, it's going to determine whether or not you're on a Windows machine, which I'm currently on, or a Mac, uh, and then just download it. It works for these operating systems. Uh, it even has options for you on your Android phone or your uh, iOS device. I do not recommend those just yet for what you're doing. Uh, those are excellent for reading articles on the go, but for what you need to do uh, in terms of the research methods course, uh, and really for any undergraduate or graduate student at the moment, focus on uh, working the bibliography, working your annotations. Um, I, I do use the iOS version and the Android version from time to time, but only when I'm traveling and needing to read uh, these articles on the fly. So go to the download, uh, create an account. It's pretty simple. Again, everything's free. I do recommend you use an email address you're going to have for a while. Uh, so you can use your uh, EDU address uh, if you if you want to use your school address, if you want to use a personal address. If you think you're going to use this longer than the uh, number of years you'll be in school, then perhaps use a personal address. And then I'm not going to show you the downloader. Uh, that's a pretty simple, straightforward thing. If you've ever downloaded a program on the internet and installed it, uh, you're going to have that down pat. Uh, what I am going to show you is what happens uh, when you first log in. In fact, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sign out here. And this is what Mendeley is going to look like when you when you um, finish installing it. It's going to ask for your registration, your email. And I will log in on mine. I do suggest if you're on the PC or the Mac, uh, go ahead and, and click that stay signed in. Uh, it will make things easier for you in the long term. And then it's going to show you some guides. If you want to go through these guides, uh, Mendeley has an excellent set of help options there for you. Uh, go ahead and just take a look at them. Uh, but if you're one of those people that just likes to dive right in and learn as you go, uh, then we'll, we'll figure this out together here. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And the next thing you need to do is you need to have some setup. And the setup that I'm going to recommend to you is optimal for me. Um, and, and there are certain reasons why I have this setup done. So come up to your tools options and then go down to the options. So the tools menu and then go to options. Now there's going to be a number of things here. Uh, disregard this first page for just right now. What I want you to do first is go to file organizer. Now, I have these things set for a specific reason. Uh, one, I download articles to my desktop, to my downloads folder, to a thumb drive sometimes. Uh, and what I want Mendeley to do is I want Mendeley to keep track of my files for me. Uh, so the first thing I do is I turn on that Organize My Files. And this is actually the drive where I keep Mendeley installed. So all my files are copied to this particular drive. I go ahead and I turn on Sort uh, files into subfolders. This allows me to look at the year, the author, the journal, and the title in terms of drop down. And if you want to see what that looks like, I can open the containing folder. Let me just, that opens up on another screen. Let me just pull this over here. And if you look, you can see that all my articles are broken down by year. Uh, so I can, let's go to 1997. These are the authors, so they're the authors, um, the journal, and then the actual article itself. So that's just something I do for my own peace of mind. Um, I like to sort files into subfolders, and then you can change these however you see fit. And then here's an example of the path. Uh, I do recommend doing this, rename the document files. Now the first one is the unused fields. I don't use the journal in the fields. Uh, because it makes the titles really long. The titles are already pretty long to begin with. 
Uh, I do this for two reasons. One, if I need to send a document, uh, and some of you who are watching this have received documents from me, um, I like for them to know the title, the author, and the year. Uh, and it actually will change uh, the PDF file to title, author, and year based on the information in the detailed record. So the reason I do this is one, I reuse these articles um, for a number of courses that I teach. Uh, I send these articles to other colleagues. I send these articles to students and I want it not to be named server.4-12976 blah, 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 dot PDF. Uh, that makes no sense to anybody. Uh, when I have students who need to be able to read a PDF, I want them to know which PDF to read. When I say, hey, read Heath or read uh, Antonopoulos, I want them to know what authors to read. So uh, I think if, if you just turn those three things on and kind of set them up, uh, play with it a little bit, but I recommend certainly organize my files. Uh, that will keep you from losing documents in the future. Um, a lot of people will download stuff to their downloads folder, this one up here and then they delete something from their downloads folder thinking that Mendeley has it. Mendeley will only keep a link to it. Uh, if you turn this on right here, this organize my files, then Mendeley copies it and keeps a copy of it in this directory. And that keeps you from emptying your trash or cleaning up your desktop and losing any files along the way. So uh, I really recommend doing this. It means that Mendeley will keep a copy of it. Okay. Uh, the second thing I want you to take a look at is document details. Now, you don't need everything in this list. Uh, and sometimes, depending on the uh, installation, a lot of this will be turned on. Um, for instance, uh, files, hide Mendeley from WebEx, abstract auth. So you need some of these things. About these first 12, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, look at that, 12. Uh, I keep these on. And the reason I keep these on is that this is the majority of all of the articles you will have. If you're going to add a book or something like that, you can always turn that on individually or change that individually. I do leave DOI on uh, because some journals recommend it. Uh, I actually don't know why PMID is on. I'm going to turn that off. Uh, but these are some of the, the more common. I'm going to turn on RX. I'm going to turn that off too. So these are the, the, the basic ones that you need to handle journals. Now, uh, the connection setting, if you're on a network and, and you have to proxy out or uh, use some sort of connection setting, then you can change that here. Uh, if you don't, then don't worry about it. If you're, if you're hooked up to a normal uh, Wi-Fi or you're hooked up to a normal home network or a school network, you're not going to need to worry about this. So then click apply. And what that's going to do is it's going to organize files. Uh, I turned mine off and then turned it back on, so it's just verifying my organization. Okay, that's basically all there is to installing and getting Mendeley to run. Um, the next thing I'll show you how to do is link it to Word. Uh, up in the Tools section here, you'll see two options. Um, I don't use the first one. I don't use the Web Importer. Some people do, uh, but we can talk about that later. I, I don't think for right now it's going to help you any. Uh, but this install MS Word plugin definitely will. Now, to install the MS Word plugin, you have to make sure that all your Microsoft products are turned off. So if you're open in Word or Excel or something like that, or Outlook, uh, just close those programs down. It'll try to do it for you, but sometimes it fails. Just so close down Word, close down Excel, and then turn this on. Click that install MS Word plugin. And what'll happen is you'll get a little thing like this. And if you see this green, uh, this green install button, sometimes on a Mac, it'll show you a green, uh, a green bar. You're good to go. And it'll say plug in installed and, and it pretty much gives you the green light to go ahead. And then you can fire up Word, which I will do right now. Go to the references and see that Mendeley is installed. And that's pretty much it. Uh, that's how you get started in Word, both the download, the installation, some of the settings to set, uh, and uh, linking it to Word. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. Um, it'll really get you started uh, in terms of going about and getting uh, Word ready for...